All right, so what are the things that are determining our VO2 max on the outside? So we talked a lot about how our central system is gonna adapt. We're gonna get this stretch on the heart. The stretch on the heart is going to cause the integrins to deflect. That's going to change the, the association with the integrin link kinase and this protein malucin. Integrin link kinase malucin are gonna bring TSC, to, or, sorry, are gonna bring mTOR complex two and protein kinase B together. And that's gonna start this cascade that's gonna to lead to physiological hypertrophy of the heart which is going to increase our stroke volume, resulting in an increase in cardiac output, resulting in an increase in VO2 max. But the other thing that we can do, because we can't train our heart rate, we can't train our maximum heart rate. That is, that's not something that we can cause to adapt. We can train, the other thing we can train is this arterial venous difference. So how much, if we measure the blood flow in, blood flow out, what, how much oxygen did we lose over, those, over that muscle mass? And really what determines the, this AVO2 difference is delivery of oxygen. So that means how many blood vessels do you have going into that muscle? And the second thing that can determine um, this AVO2 difference is once you get the blood into there and it's got the oxygen in it, now you need mitochondria in order to use the oxygen. So the two things that we're going to adapt on the periphery are going to be our blood vessels and our mitochondrial mass. We're also going to increase fat oxidation enzymes and a bunch of other things, but the key things for VO2 max, increasing our blood vessels so that we can get more angiogenesis, so that we can get more oxygen delivery, and we're going to increase our mitochondrial mass so that we can use the oxygen that we get to produce energy. So if all of these things are controlled by a single coactivator, and that's this coactivator called the, the PPAR gamma, so this is the PPAR gamma is the PGC, PPAR gamma. So the, this is the peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma, coactivator one alpha. And when, when this group overexpressed PGC one alpha into muscle, what you can see is you get a lot more black dots in there. And those black dots are the, those are the, um, the capillaries within the muscle. So now you've just put in one gene and you've got a, a boatload more capillaries. And if you look and see how much there is of, of the mitochondrial mass, so now you've got a doubling of mitochondrial mass in some of these faster fibers and a 50% increase in the slower fibers. So even in slow oxidative fibers, we've increased our, our, um, our mitochondrial mass quite significantly. And so now what they've got is they've got this beautiful thing because whenever you exercise, you both get a central adaptation and a peripheral adaptation. But now just by overexpressing PGC1 alpha, they've got this big increase in the peripheral adaptation without having to, to increase or change the central adaptation. So now you can actually establish how much, how much um, adaptation you've got, how much is due to the peripheral adaptation versus the central. So when we look, when they looked and, and measured VO2 max, there's the wild type VO2 max, about 45. And when you look at the PG1 alpha overexpressors, even though you have this doubling of mitochondrial mass and this huge increase in, in capillaries, you get about a 25% increase in VO2 max. So really the central core, the, the heart and its ability to deliver oxygen is the primary determinant of VO2 max. The secondary determinant is the peripheral adaptations, but the peripheral adaptations, they don't have a huge role, but they are gonna to contribute to an increase in VO2 max. So really when we're looking to do these adaptations within our skeletal muscle, what we're doing, increase mitochondria, increase blood vessels, fat oxidation, glucose oxidation, all of those enzymes are gonna go up. That's the peripheral adaptation. The central adaptation is gonna be increase in, in cardiac output, and those two things are going to be the things that are going to allow us to drive our increase in VO2 max. All right, so VO2 max is limited by the delivery of oxygen to the working muscle. So that's how much the heart can beat and how many blood vessels we have going into our muscle. You can improve oxygen delivery by increasing oxygen in the blood. You can breathe in pure oxygen. You can increase your red blood cell mass. You can increase your cardiac output by increasing the size of the chamber by through physiological cardiac hypertrophy or by increasing blood supply to the muscle by increasing capillary density. 
the physiological hypertrophy of the heart requires PKB to stimulate, to drive an increase in mTOR complex one activity. But this is happening in a slightly different way, working through the integrins, integrin link kinase, malusin, mTOR complex two, and PKB, rather than going um, through the RIC uh, pathway. The increase in capillary density is mediated through basically this one transcriptional co-activator called PGCO-alpha, and that's really important for increasing mitochondrial mass and increasing capillary density. But as we saw, even when we get a really big increase, a doubling of that, we're only going to get a 25% increase in VO2 max. So the primary uh, things that are happening are happening centrally, but the peripheral adaptation is going to be important as well. And that's what we talk about in the next couple of lectures.